But really what Brain Soul Success is, is I found out how we could actually realign the body, mind, spirit in the energy field and dig out those traumas that are stuck in the spaces of the brain. And it aligns you, aligns your brain, but it also aligns with your soul's truth. Welcome to the Soaring Child Podcast, where parents of children with ADHD learn tips and tricks to help their child soar at home, at school, and in life. We feature interviews with experts, medical professionals, and parents just like you who are learning how to reduce ADHD symptoms using food and other natural strategies. Because children with ADHD deserve to soar just like every other child. I'm your host, Dana Kay. Hello, parents. This is Dana Kay here with another edition of the Soaring Child podcast. Now, I talk a lot about adopting a holistic approach to helping our kids with ADHD. And for those of you that don't actually know what that means, I'm going to read you what the dictionary states. So it states, characterized by the treatment of the whole person, taking into account mental and social factors rather than just the symptoms of illness. Now, this is my philosophy to a T and everything that we do to help families reduce ADHD symptoms naturally takes this approach. Now, I mentioned mental and social factors, but there are also energetic and spiritual aspects to this. And this is what we will be discussing today. The expert that I have here is Dr. Louise Swartzwalter, and she is a master transformational coach, speaker, teacher, naturopath, and healer. And she serves women and men around the world. She is the creator of the Brain Soul Success Academy and the B-R-A-I-N system, which is a unique multidimensional system that works on the mind, the body, the soul, and energetic fields all at the same time for quicker results. Uh, Dr. Louise has 30 years of experience helping people achieve optimal brain power and success in life and business. Using a combination of tools, Louise has helped people move from anxiety to calm in just one session. And one client told her that one session felt like 16 years of therapy. Wow, that is amazing. And she told me that another one said she saved my life. I am so excited today to welcome Dr. Louise Swartzwalter to the Soaring Child. Hi, Louise. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> it's great to be with you. Thank you so much, Donna. Oh, you're welcome. I am very excited to talk about this topic. I, I don't you know, I don't, I don't discuss energetic and spiritual side of the holistic approach much. And so I was really excited uh, when I came across listening to you on, an, on another podcast and I couldn't wait uh, to have you on. So can you just explain to me, you know, how did you get into this? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, my background was special ed. So I was a special education teacher right out of college um, and I worked a lot with dyslexia kids, too. So I took a whole program in learning how to work with with dyslexia. And it was like a therapy program for the brain. Um, and then I got sick myself and mm -hmm. I ended up really crashing and I lost my brain power. But I'm talking crashing like like three autoimmune diagnoses, oxygen for three years, 89 pounds, no front teeth. Um, a dentist took out all my mercury fillings in one day and I was so full of heavy metals that I literally crashed and I didn't have any brain power in my thirties. So my quest was to get my brain back and be a mom to my kids again. That was my why. And through my own journey, I discovered that it's not just about the brain and it's not just about the physical body that we had to work with the mental, emotional, the spiritual and the energetics to really heal. So it took me a long time. And that whole journey of course was my biggest biggest teacher. And I started using some of the neurobiofeedback and energetic techniques with my dyslexic students. So, so my students, so I actually kind of had two businesses at the same time. Mm -hmm. I was moving into the whole natural world of, of healing and I studying to be a natural path. And at the same time, I got a biofeedback device and I was still teaching dyslexics, a therapy program. And many of them were ADHD as well. You know, so they were your tribe. Mm -hmm. And I remember David saying, oh, 
I just can't read today. You have to put me on biofeedback, right? So he was really just saying, hey, this is really helping me. And he felt it, right? And he felt it. And then I started doing more energy work with those with those students as well. And I saw that their reading would improve, their writing would improve, their processing would improve. And it was pretty amazing because I was like a science-based teacher person. Mm. And here I'm using this like other kind of energy tools that were helping them even more. And it wow. kind of blew me away, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, why don't you just sort of just dive into that for the listeners? What is that energetic approach? You know, what are those tools? Uh, to be honest, between you and me, you know, I don't know a lot about it and mm-hmm. I, I'm really an open book and want to learn. So teach us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know what? So we're 99% space, only 1% physical. Okay. And we hold the traumas in the spaces of the brain. So we hold emotions in those spaces and they actually create a lesion or a bump, a cellular memory bump. And the doctor that did the work on that is Dr. Hamer. He was a German doctor and he discovered that trauma can cause an illness. He ended up with testicular cancer three months after his son was shot and killed. And he said to himself, it must be the trauma because I was healthy before. Why do I suddenly have this cancer? And he was working with cancer patients. And what he found was that there were certain themes that he would see for different illnesses. And he, the cool thing he did that I loved is he took spec scans. He took pictures of their brain and he would find the lesion in the brain. And, and then they would treat them for the trauma Oftentimes their cancer would go in submission, you know, and the trauma would go away and the lesion would go away. So I figured out a system in an energetic way of clearing those spaces in the brain. And so when you're, I think ADHD is a gift. Mm -hmm. A lot of the students I work with were to me, they were brilliant, smart, um, and and often had a passion for something. And if you could direct them into whether it was a sport or a music or something that they loved, you know, they would super, super excel at it. And some of the, you know, biggest leaders in our world are ADHD. And I'm, you know, just, I don't know. I just really think, I just really think it's a gift. And so I always talked about it as allowing your gift to shine. Agreed. And what I found is I found when I started doing the energy work with these kids is it did allow their gift to shine in a different way. So it wasn't just the physical body. So I created a whole system. And so it's the B-R-A-I-N system. So it's the brain system, but it's an acronym. Mm -hmm. And that acronym really stands for working with the body, working with release. So B is body, R is releasing, releasing the mental chatter and the emotional baggage, the trauma that caused. So oftentimes, even with someone who's labeled ADHD, there's unburied trauma, okay? There was a divorce in the family. There's abandonment, you know? They were beat up on the playground. <laughs> you know, it could be anything, you know? It can and even so be in, in, the in, the birth, in the birth process. That, that, that can be traumatic as well. I mean, for my son, uh, he was induced two weeks early. He was whipped off to the NICU. He had premature lung disease, which doesn't happen very often for babies his age, and um, was in the NICU for two weeks. And so, like, something like that can even cause that trauma. It, it's not necessarily something in the, you know, post-birth process that, that, can, that can cause it. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing that, you know, because I know we want to do a process today, maybe clearing some energy as a demo for everyone so they can feel it too. And I often do think that all birth is a trauma. I mean, you're in this warm little cocoon and all of a sudden you're out in the world, right? Totally. (laughs) It's like a shock. So, you know, I learned we always have to clear the shock. So for people to heal, we have to clear the shock. So, so the R is releasing all that mental chatter, emotional baggage, and any trauma. And then A is aligned with spirit, spirit, God, your belief, whatever your higher power is, is always a part of healing. And then I is integrate. And we have to integrate your brain frequencies to your soul's true purpose. And when we do that, people become more aligned and more focused 
and more balanced. And then N is new program. And the new program is like literally rebooting your computer. So your brain, and this is the difference between even what I learned years ago and what I started doing, you know, fifth, the last 15, 20 years here, is that your brain has an energy field around it. It actually has rings around it. And the best example that I can give as a visual would be think of an atom. When we see in science class a picture of an atom, there's a nucleus, and then those, those rings that circle around it. Well, think of your brain like that. You have these rings around your brain. When they're off and they're wiggly wobbly, you'll feel off. And so if you're having a day where you can't remember things, you know, or you just have that brain fog, you know, or you're daydreaming, you really can't get a handle on things. Um, often it's in the field first. It's in those rings around the brain. So I learned some codes for success from my teacher, uh, how to actually clear those rings. And so that allows that person to become more aligned, more focused, more balanced. Well, I don't know about the listeners out there, but two things I want to want to say here. One, just speaking to you, I feel calm. <laughs> uh, two, I am excited to learn more about this and I can't wait to see what it's all about. So, you know, you, you mentioned that uh, you're going to do a session uh, with yes. me. And so I'm very, very excited to to hear and see what that's like. Uh, we do have a number of people listening on the podcast platforms. We may have some people watching videos, so we need to sort of be cognizant of, of both. Uh, mm -hmm. But before, uh, before we sort of go into that, what can you share that will will help uh, you know our, our parents that have kids with ADHD? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, all the things you're doing, you know. So we have to look holistically. Mm -hmm. So you know, yes, it's diet, and it's always allergies. It's always food allergies. Yes. So those food sensitivities need to be treated, mm -hmm. and I use a cellular retraining. I'm sure you have methods of doing that too. Yes. Um, but you know, I'm gonna see you're gonna see physical body things, the sensitivity to wheat, to dairy, to egg, to corn, to sugar. You know, mm -hmm. you're gonna see all that. So diet is very much a part of it. And you know, we live in a kind of a toxic diet American we do sad diet world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. Yes. Uh, you know, and so yes, the more you can go to lower organic foods because all the chemicals in our foods affect us too, all the hormones in our meat. So it's starting there. That's foundational. Yeah. my The listeners have heard me harp on and on and on and on about diet for sure. Uh, diet being the foundation of everything. If you don't have a solid foundation, your house will fall down and the body is exactly the same. So you are preaching to the choir here, Louise, for sure. <laughs> Yes. You know, so that's a foundational piece. You definitely want to do that. Um, and then, you know, the piece that I do is the releasing piece. Mm. Um, and I want to share with you guys something called mind gems and mind gems is balancing the brain rings in the field, but they're handheld positions on the body. So I had all of my students and all of my clients now all over the world doing the mind gems because they take about three minutes to do. Mm. So I do them morning and night. And we'll give them to you as a gift. But like, for example, um, to balance present time, to get yourself into present time when you're like going off here in a very fast direction, you just put your hand on top of your head and you hold it for 12 seconds. And you're present to your breath. And then you switch hands and put the other hand on top of your head. And so that's one of the mind jumps. Another one, let's see, let's do this one. Will you clear fear and it switches on the brain? So you cone your fingers, meaning you're taking your fingers and your thumb together, making like a little point. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do that on both hands. And we're going to take the right hand and put it on your left occiput. So you're behind your head and that bump that you feel there. And then you take the right hand on the left side. So you're crossed behind your head. And that crossing helps cross midline, crossing right and left brain, crossing the corpus callosum. This one release, releases fear. 
and switches on your brain. And, and you for hold the listeners it for 12 out seconds. there, sorry, I was going to say for the listeners out there, we will definitely share some links in the uh, in the comments to these mind gems that Louise is sharing with us now. Yeah, they're they're amazing. I I do these morning and night, and then we're going to switch. So the other arm is going to go on top. So it's kind of like you're still crossed behind there, but your other arm is on top, and we hold that for twelve seconds. And then another simple one is just to put the pads of your fingers together. So I'm just putting the pads of my fingers together, almost like I have prayer hands, but they're open. And this switches on your electrical body. And you can feel it, can't you? Mm -hmm. It's very calming. Mm hmm this is a great way to sit in front of your computer when you're waiting for something to download because we're being affected by all this electromagnetic field, that's right? For sure. And that's so simple. It's it very simple. So there's 12 of them and that's just three, hmm. you know, they can really help balance your, your brain rings when they're off in the field. You know, and there's a few that would deal with like anger. And I remember I had a woman I was working with and her son was very ADHD and very angry. And he was about eight years old then. And she taught him just three of the mind jumps. And she would say, Michael, do your mind jumps. And he would do those three and he would calm down. I love it. So there's such a great little tool. It's just a simple little, little tool that can be used for sure. And I guess I also want to give everyone out there hope. You know, I want you to see that ADHD is a gift. It's not, it's, 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 it's the beautiful, it's the beautifulness in your child, mm -hmm. you know, if you're looking at your child and it totally can be changed, you know? So I started doing neurobiofeedback 20 years ago. And when I figured out I could do a group, I got all my ADHD parents in a room and I said, Hey, you guys, I know you can't get your kids here every week. Because they're in soccer, they're in music, they're in dance, they can't come. It's so hard to get them here. I have an idea. Let's put them in a group and I can send long distance frequency every Wednesday night to a group. It's like sending a text message, only you don't need a phone. It's energy. And so it became, it was, it started Donna as an experiment. You know, I thought, oh, I can do groups. I want to do that. That's so cool. Let's figure mm. this out. And I got them all together. And so I charged a minimal fee per month and I did it for three months because it takes three months to change the brain. At the end of three months, not one of those kids was ADHD. They went from C's to A's in school. The parents who I also put in the group said to me, we're communicating better. We like this. What are you going to do next for us? <laughs> and so it was really cool because parents were communicating better. The kids were succeeding. They were getting better grades in school. And so honestly, it was just long distance frequency. And so how does that work? Um, it's because everything is energy. It works like a text message. So how do you end up with the words on your phone and a family member doesn't get the same text you do? It's your number. Mm -hmm. It's your individual number. So the way the bioresonance programs I use is it works on your name, your birthday, and your place of birth. Mm -hmm. So even if you're a twin, you have a different name. And so I'm able to send energy to that person or to a whole group of people. When you do a group, you have to have a theme. You know, in other words, I can't give um, I can't give testosterone to the group because not everyone needs it, but mm -hmm. I can give all the intentional affirmations of I am calm and focused and balanced. Mm -hmm. I can give amino acids. I can give hydration. So I can do physical, mental, emotional, spiritual things in a program to send frequency all long distance in the same way a text message might be sent. Everything is energy. Fascinating. Absolutely. It's fascinating. quantum physics. It's the wave of the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's for sure. I, we, we did, uh, as part of my d- degree, we, it was a focus on that quantum physics and uh, definitely, uh, you know, we touched on that, but, you know, in terms of my program uh, and things like that out there, you know, haven't sort of delved into it, but it, it is absolutely fascinating. Now, I know one of your programs is called Brain Soul Success. So what does that mean? Yeah. Oh, I love this. This is what I want to do with you today. So, so the work evolved, you know, so that's where I started, you mm-hmm. know, and now I work more with entrepreneurs entrepreneurs who um who have businesses and they want to up level their businesses reach more clients release any of those blocks and what i found is i found that when our brain and soul are aligned is when we are our authentic self and 100% our soul's truth so yes all those adhd kids and adults need that too right and a lot mm-hmm. of entrepreneurs do have the label or they may not have been diagnosed with mm-hmm. ADHD, but they're multitasking. They're doing lots of things at the same time. And we do have that energy of squirrel. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I'm going to go do this over here. Oh my gosh, I'm going to do this over here. You are talking to one of those squirrels <laughs> over here. <laughs> you know, so I think that happens. I think that happens a lot. But really what brain soul success is, is I found out how we could actually realign the body, mind, spirit in the mm-hmm. energy field. And dig out those traumas that are stuck in the spaces of the brain. And it aligns you, aligns your brain, but it also aligns with your soul's truth. Interesting. And so how does how does one of those brain soul balancing sessions go? What does it look like? You know, let's play with this. Um, it's actually about words. Um, and so what we really do is we start with um a goal or an intention. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you were representing your group, your Mm -hmm. tribe. Mm -hmm. And I said, Hey, Donna, what do you want to have change or be different in your life? What would be that first thing? So if I was a mama with a child with ADHD, which I am a mom with a child with ADHD, but we're not suffering from those symptoms anymore. But if I was one in the thick of it, I can tell you exactly. I just, I wanted peace and calm in my house. Okay. So I have peace and calm. Mm Mm-hmm. My family has peace and calm. And my family has peace and calm. Okay. So if you have peace and calm and your family had peace and calm, what would change or be different as a result of that? I would, I love my, I, I'm thinking back to when, we were going through this. I would always mm-hmm. say that I love my son, but I don't like him. Um, and so I would hopefully grow to like him again, um, that we would have happiness. We would be mm-hmm. able to wake up in the morning without dreading the day ahead. We would be able to go out for dinner without electronic devices and have a peaceful conversation. These were all the things that when I was in the thick of it that I would dream and hope about. Okay. So you would tell yourself that I like my son Mm -hmm. and that we wake up happy and we can go out for dinner and, and do activities. It sounds like wanting to do those things together. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So if you're telling yourself you like your son, you get to wake up happy, you're doing these activities together as a family, and you have that peace and calm in you and that peace and calm in your family, how would all that make you feel? Peaceful and calm. <laughs> Is there another word besides peaceful and calm? It would make me feel content. Awesome. Is it allowing, doing, being, honoring? If you were feeling content and you're telling yourself, hey, I like my son and we wake up happy and can go out to dinner and do activities and you have peace and calm and your family has peace and calm, who would you be honoring fully then that maybe you're not honoring fully now? An interesting question. 
Mm-hmm. Who would I be? I'd be honoring myself as a mother. Mm-hmm. I would be honoring my son mm-hmm. for what he deserves. I would be honoring my parents for bringing me into this world and giving me a happy life. I'd be honoring my other son because he deserves it just as much as everybody else. Mm-hmm. And I'd be honoring my husband. <laughs> Is that what you mean? Yeah, you know, um, so the question, so, so the question is, 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 is where I'm walking it down, I'm using NLP questions, mm-hmm. you know, to kind of get to sort of a bottom line goal. Mm-hmm. So you can see the higher spiritual truth in honoring yourself, mm-hmm. honoring your son, your other son, your family, you know, um, it brings you to a place of, of more gratefulness mm-hmm. or really honoring. Yes. You know, um, and then and then we say, okay, then I put all those goals or intentions in a box. So I wrote them down here. Mm-hmm. So I just wrote them on a piece of paper. And then I say, okay, this is this is the peace and calm that you want, both in yourself and in your family. And then you know, um, I hope all the moms know out there that you set the tone for your family. What happens to mom happens to everyone. <laughs> You are 100% <laughs> right about that. Right? You know, uh, so, yep, and heaven forbid, if mom's not feeling good, what happens to everyone else, right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is peace and calm. This is you being content. This is, of course, honoring honoring your son, both your sons and your husband, and honoring yourself. Yeah. And then I say, okay, who or what is pulling you away from that? And then I draw strings from this box. And it's a metal, it's a medical intuitive kind of process. So I'm, and I teach people how to do this, you know, where you can go into the energy field and figure out the people or situations that are pulling you away from Mm -hmm. that peace and calm and the desired goal that you want. Mm -hmm. Right. Is there one, two, there's maybe three strings. Okay, so I just drew a box with three strings. And then I asked the question, okay, who is pulling Don away from this? Is this a male, a female, or a situation? There's a situation. Recent or old, old situation. Something with you, yep. Um, I feel like I really want to clear that birth trauma thing. So this is when your son was born. What's his first name? Oliver. Oliver. Oh, I bet he's so cute. I can already see him. I have one. I love the kids. Uh, I only have two, but I wanted 12 kids. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't I, think I could have done it. I had special ed 12 kids. <laughs> I <laughs> take my hat off to you. I mean, I've got two boys. Uh, my Oliver's now 13, but um, uh, yeah, two boys. I couldn't imagine bringing another one into the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for some reason, I like cheaper by the dozen. My dream was to have like a different colored towel in the linen closet for each of the kids. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know why it's kind of crazy, but Hey, it's all, it's all good. Um, now I have kids all over the world. Really amazing. <laughs> so this is Oliver. So is this his birth? Is this you giving birth? Is this a combination of both of you? Yes. So the words I'm, so I have cheat sheets of words. And so the words are the, it's the power of the spoken word. The truth will set you free. So it's a process where we find the words that happen, the shock, you know, of, of Oliver's birth, the shock to him, the shock to you. You know, we find the words that might be yours, might be his, they're emotional words. And I name those first. And then I say, hey, was that a liar, thief, or fraud? Okay, now that came from John 10, 10 in the Bible. This is the soul part of brain soul success because it clears it on a soul level. So I'm literally clearing the trauma that got stuck there that you could sit in therapy for 16 years doing. Okay. And it can happen this quickly because it's energy. All right. And so, um, so that's why. Okay. Is it this one? So I got shock. 
obsessive, devastated. Oh, you're going to be much more calm. Devastated. Powerless. Off balance. Is there anything else here? Here, here, one, two. Lack of control. You can see where these could resonate for a trauma like that. Yeah. Definitely. Unsupported. Did you feel supported during that time with like the hospital and the people and the staff or anything? Yeah, I did feel supported. Yeah, I did. Um, for those listening, uh, you know, I shared with Louise prior to this call that my son was in the NICU, um, was induced early and um, was in the NICU for two weeks. And so there was some premature lung disease. And so we're talking about, about that, uh, that process. Um, I think, the the part that I didn't feel supported in was, uh, you know, the two hours after birth where I sat in the hospital room without anyone mm -hmm. coming in to tell me a single thing about what had happened to him. Okay, so that I want to clear too. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah, that that fear that came up, the worry, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. Yeah, that's too. That probably felt like ten hours. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so is there another word we need to name on this string? No. So the shock, the obsessive, the devastated, the powerless, the off balance, the unsupported, the lack of control, the fear, the worry. And then I just say, and these came from John 10, 10 in the Bible. So they literally sort of like cut the cord, cut the string at a different level. We say, was that a liar, thief, or a fraud on you? It's a thief on the peace and calm that you want. What did it do? Did it kill, steal, or destroy? It destroyed. And then I look for the positive words of what it destroyed. So let's find that out. Hope. So we're reclaiming hope. Strength. Reclaiming strength. Reclaiming the vision of what you thought would be. Trust. Reclaiming trust. And confidence that it's going to be okay. And letting go. Then I say, um, then I do another little clearing statement. It's called the access consciousness. And I say, I destroy and uncreate any judgments, assumptions, projections, conclusions, decisions about the situation of Oliver's birth and all the trauma back there and the shock and the worry and the concern and the emotions. We release it now, let it go, allow you to be free to have peace and calm in yourself and in your family, um, to honor yourself, your sons, your husband, and get back to your soul's truth. Good and bad, right and wrong, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. I know that makes no sense. It's <laughs> called a clearing statement. And what it does is clear energy. And what we can see, and I know you're not, on, this isn't on video, it's audio. What we can see is your face is already changing. So you're becoming lighter. I kind of call it like giving an energetic facelift, but it's really reducing stress in the field that's been there for years. How old is Oliver now? 13. So this has been there for 13 years. Okay, cool. Did we successfully get that? Yeah. Um, I want to do the two hour thing though. So when you were waiting for two hours, do you still have a picture in your mind of, of yes. that time? Yes. Okay. That picture, Donna, is that, lesion that I talked about in the brain. It creates a cellular memory bump. Those traumas, my belief is, we're not treating Alzheimer's completely. This is the missing piece. We have to clear the traumas in the brain that are gunking up the brain and taking away that space so that they can heal all the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I'm saving a lot of lives when we're clearing early. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully. Um, so I want you to see the picture in your mind that you see and that worry, that concern that, oh my gosh, what's happening, that shock, you know, the panic that's coming in when you're sitting there waiting for your son. We have to clear the visual. So how we're going to do that, this is called EMDR. 
and I'm going to have you look straight with your with your eyes, but your peripheral vision is going to follow my fingers. So your head stays straight, but I'm moving my fingers from one side of the screen to the other, and you just follow my fingers with your eyes. So it's like your eyes are going to kind of look to the side, and then the other side, back to center, and then look up to the ceiling. While you're seeing that picture of you sitting there, down to the floor, to the right side of the floor and down. So kind of look to the right and down, and then to the left and down, and then back to center, and then make a circle with your eyes. And then counterclockwise, go the other way. Beautiful. Good work. It should be fuzzier, like it's not so vivid. Is it that is. true? It's true. Yes. Oh, excellent. Good job. Excellent. It's bizarre. Yeah. Good. Mm. You're going to be so much better. Awesome. Yay. Okay. Very good. All right. What's this next? What, and you know, for all of you listening out there, um, I guess I invite you when you when you listen to this, or you know, rewind, listen to it again, and do the same thing for yourself. Picture a trauma and the emotions around it. It might be different than what Donna's doing here, you know, or it could be something with your child too, you know? So so we want to release that. Okay, all right, what's the strength? Is this a male or if there's a female in the field? Um, is this you? This is you. Is this you at a certain time? Yes, is this you as a mother? No, when you were a kid? Yes, one, two, three, you were four. So this is, this is Donna at age four. Is this age four yourself? Nope. Is this with mom? Is this with dad? This is something with you and mom. Is it both of you? Yes. What's mom's first name? Lena. Nina. Okay. So no, this is Lena. L Y N. L. L. Lena. Got it. No, no. L Y N. Oh, Lynn. Okay. Yeah. And it's just L Y N, not well, it's, N. -N? It's Lynette, um, but she she says Lynn. Okay, she goes by Lynn. Okay, so this is Lynn. So is this something in Lynn's field that was in your field, or is it in both of your fields? This is probably so. When we're little kids, and even as adults, but when we're little, we take on our parents' energy. It like literally sticks to us like Velcro, and we want them to feel better, right? Mm -hmm. So so this is your mom's energy, probably you're filtering it through you because you're only four. Mm -hmm. So what do you remember at age four? Tell me what you remember about mom at age four. Um, I don't remember much, um, uh, you know, of when I was actually four. Um Mum was a mum was a stay at home mum, and she was she loved to clean and cook, and um, very sort of you know pedantic about the cleaning, and um, yeah, that's probably really it. I picture my house where I was when I was four, and my big you know the box TV. Do you remember those TVs that yes. were in the boxes? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Because this could be mom's emotions in your field and you, you may not even know. In other mm. words, it doesn't have to be, you know, a big T trauma. Yeah. Right. It yeah. can literally be just the energy in the energy field. And if mom is feeling anxiety or whatever, mm -hmm. then you could too, you mm -hmm. know, because the first word I got was unprotected and worry. So these are, you know, this is, this is Lynn probably worrying about her kids. Um, let's see. I got dread too. Dread, worry, unprotected. Um, column A, column B, no. Okay. Maybe obsessive. Was she like clean? You know, like you said, cleaning. Yep. Yeah, I know. I learned to clean the floors from my mom. <laughs> stand when the floors are dirty. <laughs> we learn these things, right? Oh, oh it's right. so funny. Is there another word I need to say? A through M, M through Z, M N O O. 
oppressed, no? Offended, no? Opinionated, opinionated. Is there another word we need to say about mom? No. So then we say, hey, was this a liar, a thief, or a fraud on you being peace and calm, right? And having honoring your family here. And so it's a thief. It's stealing your freedom, your imagination, and your comfort to have. So we're just getting more freedom back, more imagination, and more comfort to have, and more security. Is there another word we need to say? No. Do I need the statement? So we're just going to say good and bad, right and wrong, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And I'll have you tap the bottom of your foot. Awesome. Okay. Is there another string? There's one more string. Is this a person, place, or situation? It's a situation. Um, is it recent? Is it old? It's an old situation. Is it something with Donna? Something with Donna and family? Something with you and Oliver? Something with your husband? Something with your other son? Something with your mother? Something with your father? So this is something with your father. What's dad's first name? Ellis. Ellis. So is this something with you and Alice or just Alice? This is his energy in your field. So let's see if I can get time period. Sixteen? I think you were age 16. So is this something age 16 with you and dad? Yes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Okay. Um, Did you have a boyfriend then? Yes, I uh yes, I think I did. Yep. So is this something with, with you, Dad, and the and the fact that you had a boyfriend? Was this him worried about his little girl? Probably. That's a typical daddy thing. <laughs> right? You're 16 and you're dating and you're like, huh, who's she dating? Hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, he wants you to be happy, but it's just it's yeah. I got, I got taken for granted. Taken for granted and worthless. Is this in the field? Is it your stuff? Is it dad's stuff? I'm actually picking up the boyfriend. Jealousy. So taken for granted, worthless, jealousy. Let's see what else. Here, here, one, two, three. Emotional vampire. <laughs> You're laughing. Is this fitting? Oh, I shouldn't <laughs> say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We don't have to. We can just say words. I do this even in big groups, Donna, and and it's the words that matter. So like mm. the situation can be different for everyone. It yeah. could be like it can be like a father or a brother or mm. an uncle. It doesn't have to be the same person. Mm. And yet it will work. Yeah. Because it's the words. And yeah. it's because we're clearing it by saying liar, thief, fraud, kill, steal, or destroy. We're clearing the soul tie. So you become more hundred percent you. So you can see how anyone, whether they're a parent of someone with ADHD or they have ADHD themselves, they're not their soul's truth. Mm -hmm. Those little kids who acted out in school, because I was a special ed teacher, right? And then the label was, I didn't like the label. I had the, the, the behavior disordered class. Mm -hmm. Already, that's yeah. terrible, right? Mm -hmm. And yet I loved those boys who were acting out. Why? Because they were keeping their soul's truth. Maybe they were allowing the themselves to speak their truth. And I honored them for that. I still had to discipline and, you know, keep things right. But I, I figured that out years later that the reason I liked them so much is because they were really getting to speak their truth. Mm -hmm. no? um, so that's what happened here, I think, at age 16. Um, so take it for granted, worthless, jealousy, emotional vampire, liar, thief. That's a thief on, on you. So it, it's stealing your hope, freedom, flow. Ooh, cool. 
we're getting back hope, freedom, flow, and relief. Nice. Is there another word we need to say? No. Do we get that? So we're just going to say good and bad, right and wrong, pot and pot, goal line, shorts, boys, ambiance. And we're going to tap the bottom of your foot. Woohoo. Do we clear everything we need to on your goals here? Yeah. How are you feeling? Bizarre. <laughs> 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 yeah it's a very lighter process I do I do and you know when you're sort of like I think I think the biggest thing for me was when the with when you're doing the thing with the eyes and mm -hmm. that I actually brought up emotions I felt you know emotional um mm -hmm. <clears throat> like I was going to cry um mm -hmm. but you know now I've got a smile on my face and I don't feel that way um, so I do. Yes. Yeah, it's good. And I can see it in your face. It's beautiful. So what we just did in the brain system is the R part, the releasing part, right? Yeah. Yep. Now I always feel it's not complete unless we do all the steps and all those mm -hmm. steps actually came to me because the therapy program that I use with dyslexic kids was multi-sensory mm. and it's how we could teach them to read, write, and spell. And it's stuck in the brain and a light bulb went off and I said, well, how come we're not doing that in healing? Mm -hmm. It took me 16 years to heal. And that's why I developed the brain system. Mm -hmm. Because when we do it multidimensionally and we're doing mind, body, spirit, and energy field at the same time, it sticks. And then people don't have to like carry this energy forever, mm -hmm. you know? And so this part is called the new program. And so the N equals the new program. And your new program is where your goals or intentions of what you shared with me. Right. And so I have you say those. I don't know if your community knows muscle testing. They do they know muscle testing? We haven't um we haven't done muscle testing on the Soaring Child podcast yet. Uh, but it is one that is going to be uh, um I'm going to be bringing someone on for that for sure. Oh, that's really awesome because um anyway, that's what I was doing when I was testing these words. Yes. Is I was okay. using muscle testing. Yeah. And I do the same with your goals or intentions here. And then I use some energy codes to reboot your computer of your brain and energy field. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to have you say these, Donna. So say, I have peace and calm. I have peace and calm. And my family has peace and calm. My family has peace and calm. Good. Um, and I tell myself, I like my son. And I tell myself, I like my son. I love my son. I love my son. And we wake up happy. And we wake up happy. We can go to dinner. We can go to dinner, do activities, do activities. Awesome. I feel content. I feel content. I honor myself as a mother. I honor myself as a mother. I honor my son. I honor my son. I honor my other son. I honor my other son. I honor my parents. I honor my parents. Um, and I honor my husband. And I honor my husband. And then say all is well. All is well. Beautiful. So now I'm going to do these codes. So this is the funny part. So you're going to hear them because this is audio, but you're not going to see them. And really what I'm doing is I'm circling my hand around your body and, and I'm using spin points. So think of them instead of acupuncture points, mm -hmm. they're in the energy field. So they're not on the body. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not putting needles in the body. So you're just going to hear numbers because math is the universal language. And so the first is I'm releasing stress around all your goals. Okay. And I'm saying two, three, love, five, three, forgiveness, six, five, choice, nine, two, freedom, four, two, greater love. Okay. And then we're going to come down the front of the body. And I think I'll have you say these after me. So I'm going to say four, two, say, four. I have positive self-worth. I have positive self-worth. Good. Two, two, say, I choose to succeed. I choose to succeed. Four, four, I choose to live in joy. I choose to live in joy. And six, two, I choose to live by the higher laws. I choose to live by the higher laws. Awesome. And then one, four, seven on your backside. I'm going to have you look at my ex. 
three to nine, 26 complete cycles, 5,859 times, two to eight, 23 complete cycles, 2,623 times, three, seven, five, three, seven, seven, four, five, eight, six, four, six, nine, four, six, seven, releasing any of that trauma, 10, five, seven, eight, two, eight, seven, seven, five, and the shock, one, two, three, placing with peace, five, two. Awesome. Four two 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 four four six two six seven six seven six seven six seven six seven. Beautiful. You felt those, huh? I did. Isn't that amazing through Zoom? Wow. <laughs> That's bizarre. I know. And what we just did, and then I'll have you say these, and we want to lock it in, is what we did is we changed those brain rings in the energy field. We, and that work goes seven generations back and seven forward. So I wouldn't be surprised if you don't call me tomorrow or text me and say, hey, my son's different. Okay. I never know because it's energy work, but I often do get those comments from people because as you change, the people around you will change. So that's why it's always important to work on the parents. And yes. I know you know this because you do yes. such a great job, you know, as well as the kids. Yes. Yeah. So 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 we're gonna say those say those again. So say I have peace and calm and my family has peace and calm. I have peace and calm and my family has peace and calm. And I tell myself I like my son. And I tell myself I like my son. I love my son. I love my son. And we wake up happy. And we wake up happy. And we can go to dinner. We can go to dinner. Do activities. Do activities. Beautiful. I feel content. I feel content. I honor myself as a mother. I honor myself as a mother. I honor my other son. I honor my other son. I honor my family. I honor my family. I honor my husband. I honor my husband. And all is well. And all is well. Yay. And so you're strong on all those now. So what we did is we kind of rebooted your mm. your brain and your energy field. And so we're going to lock it in. The way we lock it in is just to Clasp your hands above your head together. And if I was with you right there, I would try to pull down on them. And you just resist me. So you'd stay strong. Okay? Mm -hmm. Good. And then we're going to comb the fingers on your right hand, like we do for the mind gems, and make a circle in front of your heart, like mm -hmm. you're circling your heart. And say, two, two. Two, two. I choose to succeed. I choose to succeed. And then tap your belly button eight times. And that locks in those intentions, those goals. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, listeners, we've experienced something very different on today's episode of The Soaring Child. And I hope that you had that you took all of that on as well. And you did those exercises with us. Mm -hmm. And Louise, I am blown away. Uh, with what you have shared with us. I've been blown away with your knowledge and your experience. And I actually can't wait to uh, learn more. I feel lighter now. I feel happy. Um, I didn't all the way through uh, until we got to those number things. And now I do. And so uh, can you share with listeners where they can find and follow you online? Yeah, absolutely. So it's louisewartzwalter.com is the website. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. So the same, the same name. Wow. Well, Louise, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been an, it's been life-changing. <laughs> I'm so happy. That's my purpose, right? And my mission is to change 10 million brains by 2025. Amazing. Amazing. Um, thank you once again for joining me today. Listeners, thank you for tuning into this week's episode of The Soaring Child. I'm Dana Kay, your ADHD health practitioner. Keep on thriving. Thank you for listening to The Soaring Child podcast today. To learn more about how to help your child with ADHD soar using natural strategies, visit our website at ADHDthriveinstitute.com and follow us on social media at ADHD Thrive Institute.